Good evening and welcome to another live broadcast from the Piano Forte Studios, 1335 South Michigan Avenue in Chicago. I'm Leslie Karras. Jazz Fest week is upon us and we have an excellent piano trio for you this evening to help celebrate. My guest here at Piano Forte for this hour is Chicago pianist Joanne Doherty. In addition to her work with a long list of Chicago jazz luminaries, Joanne also has three CDs under her own name. Most recently, Bring Joy, a 2017 release that garnered a four-star review in Downbeat and quite a bit of airplay on WDCB. We'll talk with Joanne a little later on, and we'll get to the music itself in just a moment. Before we get started, I'd like to mention that today's broadcast comes to you in partnership with Piano Forte Chicago, dedicated to helping people to love the piano. More info available at pianofortechicago.com. This event is part of a week-long series of live radio broadcasts here on WDCB, which will include three live performances from the Chicago Jazz Festival in Millennium Park, including tomorrow night's concert from the Chicago Jazz Philharmonic. You can find out more about those radio broadcasts and the festival itself at WDCB.org. Tonight's broadcast is not only reaching radio listeners across Chicagoland, it's on TV, too. So we'd also like to welcome those of you watching this event in the city of Chicago on Can TV 27. WDCB's Jazz Fest Week broadcasts are made possible in part by Shaw Print Screen Printing and Embroidery, Vom Foss in Naperville and Lincoln Square, Record Wonderland in Roselle, and North Coast Brewing Company. So, welcome again to our broadcast, and now, let's listen to the Joanne Doherty Trio, live from Piano Forte on WDCB.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for being here. Uh, thanks to DCB and Pianoforte for this beautiful opportunity. Um, and hello to everyone stuck in traffic. <laughs> that crazy storm is blowing in, and who knows what it's like on the roads right now. So um, hello out to the airwaves. That first one was called Water from an Ancient Well. It is um, by the South African composer Abdullah Ibrahim, also a fine pianist. Um, and it was the first track on our latest album, Bring Joy. Um, and I, I always like starting a concert with that because um, it just makes me feel good, and I hope it makes you feel good too. Um, and it, it's, it, it's to me, it's amazing how something as far away um, can still sound a little bit like the country church that I grew up in too. So um, uh, moving on, um, our next selection is uh, by the... Um, Louisiana composer uh, Alvin Batiste. I had uh, the real pleasure of uh, playing with Victor Goins on a concert of all Alvin Batiste music, paying tribute to him in Baton Rouge last year. And this is one of my favorites, and we added this to our repertoire as well. This is called Chatterbox.
Joanne Doherty, live from Piano Forte on WDCB, 1335 South Michigan Avenue in Chicago. Joanne, it's such a pleasure to hear you perform this evening. Thank you so much. Thanks and for having me. You were talking a little bit about the first tune that you started out with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'd like to talk about that a little bit more. Um, it strikes me that when I was listening to the original, it had a really reverential tone, and you did bring a lot of joy to that tune, a yeah. lot of swing and a lot of bounce. Uh, well, I think that tune has a lot of joy built into it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it, it may be a little quieter version of the joy than we bring sometimes, but um, uh, it was it was real important to me to... Um, uh, he's, a, he's a musician I respect very, very much. Uh, I, I remember listening to some of his records and thinking, Oh right, you can just play this pretty thing and leave some space in here, and it's mm -hmm. it's so meaningful and so rich uh, without without any acrobatics or anything, and it really made it really kind of discovering his catalog kind of was I don't know if it was a turning point, but it 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 definitely sat in my heart, uh -huh. you know. Um, because it moved me, and it, it didn't, it, it seemed like so little was going on sometimes, and it was so meaningful to me, so. But the space, as they say, the space between the notes the is sometimes space, some of the most space important Space is the parts. place. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> uh and then talk about a contrast, Alvin Batiste after yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that, oh, <laughs> that, those, those songs are so, uh, and you can see why, we, that's just fun, you know. It's, uh -huh. it's just like, you know, it's like playing with a toy or something. That, that one's just so much fun for us to to get our fingers into every time, so. Yeah. And we should also um, mention that the, the rhythm section was having a little bit of fun on that, oh, too. Oh, yes. Joshua uh, Ramos on the bass. And yes. And Ryan Bennett on the drums. Sounding great on that one, too. I, I have the fine pleasure of playing with these two gentlemen uh, so much right now. And uh, it, it has really allowed us to develop a repertoire together, so we are far overdue to record the next album, but um, mm -hmm, so that's mm -hmm. that's coming. But um, we we get to play every Monday night at Bandera right now. Where is um, Bandera? It's on uh, it's five thirty five North Michigan, and it's uh -huh. on the second floor, so it's real close to Ohio Street between Ohio and Grand, and um, it's one of those kind of rare trio settings right now. We don't have too many in the city um, of just kind of nice steady gigs, so we we've really enjoyed that as an anchor. So it's been real real nice for us. So some of the other I've noticed that some of the other um, regular gigs you have are with singers as well. Oh yeah, yeah. I uh, I really enjoy working with singers, um, uh, whether that's in, in in lots of different settings, um, jazz and other types of music as well. Um, um, we yeah, should, you know, we should talk about that for a minute. Okay, um, go ahead. <laughs> one of the things that, that uh, intrigues me about some of the work that you do is some of the theater work that you do. Speaking of other, you know, singers and, and large yeah. productions. Yeah, I think in you were um, involved with the lyrics present uh, production of Jesus Christ Superstar. Yeah, that I in, this past spring. This past spring, which I, I mark in the "This Makes Me a Lucky Girl" column, because that was really, really a joy to be part of that. Um, um, and, and it was one of those, uh, theater is always fun and awesome, but it can also be very, uh, prescribed and you are supposed to do a specific thing. And, and mm -hmm. that one was so much fun for me because, um, they would say things like, don't worry about what's written on the page, just do your thing really? and we're going to turn you up. And I was like, this is my kind of gig. So, <laughs> and oh, and there are 3,500 people just right over here. And we were on stage and everything. So uh -huh. it was, it was, we got to, part the, of the energy whole. of that, of uh -huh. feeling a room full like that was just incredible. And addictive, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> we could do that more. So you've done a lot of productions, though. Yeah, haven't you? Um, I, I just kind of I go in and out of that world. Um, I, I, my first foray into it um, was with the production of Jersey Boys that was in Chicago about the Four Seasons. About the Four Seasons, uh -huh. and then um, then we ended up taking out the second national tour. Ryan and I were both oh, on wow. that, and I was actually the conductor of that tour. How so long was that? That oh. That my involvement with that was close to two years. Oh my gosh! Um, on the road for on the, two years. Yeah, how about that? Wow! <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to be back. So. Yes, yeah, I it's really so. yeah. It, it's Chicago's a good place. Uh -huh. I mean, the world is a good place, but Chicago's a really nice place to land. Well, so. Chicago is also a good place because we have you. 
Oh, well, and it's, we have this festival this week. We have all these people, which is pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to get out myself and see as much as I can. So. And you played last year's festival, didn't I you? I did. Uh -huh. I, was so, I felt so lucky to do that. Um, and that, that stage was great, and it was just full, and it, was, it happened to be the most beautiful 83-degree, no-humidity day in the mm -hmm. world. You know, it was just the perfect day for a festival. Well, so may one, we, maybe get some more of those this week. Right. Yeah, Cross so. our fingers. Yeah. Well, you know what? I would love to hear some more music. Would you like to play it for us? Mm -hmm. All right. Actually, this next one is uh, a tune we debuted at uh, last year's festival. It is called, it's an original composition, and it's called New Light. Excellent. Joanne Doherty Trio here on WDCB at Piano Forte Studios in Chicago.
thank you so much. Um, our next song is a hybrid of two really cool composers. Um, I was spending time with the music of Alan Toussaint, and I was spending time with the music of Tad Dameron. Um, and if you're a nerd, you might recognize the two songs that I blended together, or in the know, I guess, nerd. <laughs> I'm a nerd, so. <laughs> um, and we call this Southern Mist, um, which I, I keep saying sounds like a, the name of a, a bad alcoholic drink marketed towards teenage girls. <laughs> but in our case, it's really just about to setting the, setting the vibe of a, of a place and a time. So enjoy. Thank you. 
Joanne Doherty here at Piano Forte Studios at WDCB. Joanne, let me go out on a limb. I'm okay. going to take a guess at those two tunes okay. that you All just right. melded together. Okay. You mentioned Alan Toussaint. Yes. Was it Southern Nights yes. I heard? Yes, yes, yes. And Ted Damron. Was that on a Misty uh, Yeah, uh, there we go. Uh -huh. Yeah, All get right. it, get it. All right. Praise goes to you. <laughs> <laughs> th that's a really interesting combination of tunes that oh, you blended thank there. thank you. Yeah, it's... Um, the best bridge ever, <laughs> and the best opening ever. So why steal from the best, they say. So that was my approach there. Did you ever get to see Alan Toussaint perform live? I did live? not, no, ah. I did not. Another um, New Orleans musician that you, uh, that you love. Yeah, mm -hmm. so many, so many good musicians there to love. And so much history and so much depth. There's, you think you know something and then you can just keep going and going and going deeper into our country's history and the history of different types of people and the history of the music. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's deep, you know? Well, you know, speaking of history though, you come, yourself come from an area very rich in history um, Kansas City area. Yeah, Kansas City. Give mm -hmm. a shout out to the hometown there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. a. Um, uh, and I was actually, I always think of this last song as, as one of our Kansas City kind of. Um, Ryan, Ryan and I met in Kansas City and started playing together there. Um, and we always uh, say, you know, that shuffle, that the love of a shuffle comes, you know, from the time we spent together there. So. Um, yeah, Kansas City. Good place. So is that where you first started playing jazz? It and is. Studying it too. Yeah, it is. Um, I, you know, I played and all these things. But I, after I after I went to college, I moved to the big city, and that for me was Kansas City. Okay. Um, and uh, and it was it was a perfect place for me because I uh, I the scene was rich but small enough for an, an upstart to have access to the best players there were really great players you there. could sit in with them I could and, sit in I uh -huh. could play and they they you know they would come over to your house and jam and you you know oh, you could wow. you could you could just educate yourself to whatever degree you wanted to mm -hmm. and it was it was so rewarding for for both of us to spend time there so it's so, really great so what drew you to Chicago and when did you move here um, I moved here in 1998 uh-huh um, and you know, I, I had a fire in my boots. It was I just needed to to move somewhere. Uh, I was looking for just more. Mm -hmm. It's that time of life when you're looking for more. Mm -hmm. and, and I bet you I, got it too. I, yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I, I like to say I can I can I get my butt kicked any night of the week here. Still, <laughs> after all this time, you know, uh, there's, uh -huh. there's just the world class players everywhere you look in every genre. So. There's, there's no reason to ever get tired of what's going on here because you can always just turn a corner and go deeper into something new. So Lots of different types of jazz here. So to, many to different too. types of jazz. And, and so many with that, it's almost different, uh, different groups of people. And then, mm -hmm. and then there's the, the kind of turnover of new people moving here all the time. Uh -huh. Chicago still draws young people looking to start their careers here. With fire in their boots. With fire in their uh -huh. boots, you know. And... Uh, um, and so that's that's just amazing to watch those people come up too, you know, and 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 listen and hear new things and see what's going on. So yeah. So we were talking before about Alan Toussaint, and I'm wondering if you could uh, tell us a little bit about some of the pianists you most admire, and what is it that's uh, about their music that speaks to you as a musician? Mm. Uh, pianists I admire. Um, Herbie Hancock is way up there. We have Dolphin Dances on. Here. Yeah, yeah, Dolphin Dances right. on that record. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, I spent a lot of time listening to Keith Jarrett. I don't mm -hmm. really sound like I spent that much time there anymore, but I, I certainly spend a lot of time there. Um, I really love um, the, the what I think of as the classic swingers, Tommy Flanagan and Red Garland and Wynton Kelly, that mm -hmm. stuff. I hear a lot of swinging. Yeah, I, I said, yeah. And um, uh, it was actually, um, I, I had kind of come up listening to too much Keith Jarrett for a minute, and uh, I spent some time <laughs> with uh, this great pianist named Danilo Perez, and he's like, you uh -huh. need to listen to some Tommy Flanagan and you know, learn how to swing. I was like, that was some of the best advice I ever got. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and then I would have to put Stevie Wonder is really high on my list of like composers, pianists, musicians, and all those kind of things too. Speaking of Stevie Wonder, I think you just did a tribute to Stevie yeah, Wonder, didn't you? Yeah, we right? did. Last we month. did. Um, yeah, just feels like a couple weeks ago, maybe. Uh -huh. um, at uh, Winters yeah, Jazz at Club? Winters Jazz Club, which has been a wonderful, wonderful place to play and hear music. I'm so glad to have that new venue in town. Um, yeah, we uh, we did. We started uh, with a. We did a, first a tribute to Al Jarreau. 
that ah, band did. Uh-huh. Um, wow. Yeah, right. I know that's like that. That's the music that just makes my heart thump. And mm-hmm. then, and then we had so much fun doing that. And we're like, well, what else would be fun? And right. we're like, what about Stevie Wonder? And we're like, can we do this at a jazz club? And we're like, yes, we can. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it was really fun to dig into that catalog and and just wrap wrap our acoustic jazz selves around that music, you know. It's really, really fun, so, yeah. Well, we'd love to hear some more music. Before we go there, though, just one thing about Stevie Wonder that intrigues me, um, the tune that you have on Bring Joy, your mm. third CD, yeah. The Secret Life of Plants. Yeah. It's a fascinating tune. It is. It's um, it's a hard tune, so mm-hmm. I don't play it all that much. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> it's hard to keep it in my catalog. Um, it's from a movie called The Secret Life of Plants, which didn't really see much light of day, but uh, has, you know, there's a double album, and um, and we just bought the LP, and, and someone told me, apparently, when it came out, that there was a, uh, some sort of plant aroma, like scratch and sniff <laughs> situation. Yeah, it was the 70s, you know, <laughs> right, I think it right, was exactly. very much a product of the 70s. Very tactile. Uh, yes, uh-huh. yes, 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 <laughs> but uh, there are some that, uh, there weren't any, there, I'm, the send one your love with a dozen roses. I think that came from there. Um, but uh, mostly it was not, an, those weren't albums of commercial success. Mm-hmm, um, right. Uh, and you can almost hear that it's just like he's writing for a different reason on, you know, it's mm-hmm. it just, so I, I was really drawn to lots of songs on that record, but, mm-hmm. but I just, yeah, the one we put on our record was really fun for us too. Yeah. So. All right. How about some more music? Some more music. Okay. All right. Um, okay. I want to tell you a little bit about this one. Um, I, I have a, a wide range of, you know, Stevie, Algero, all these things I love to listen to. Um, this one is dipping into a different catalog. I grew up with a lot of country music, and uh, this is a Glenn Campbell tune. Uh, well, a tune Glenn Campbell made popular. It's Jimmy Webb. Um, and I, I really enjoy this because it, it reminds me of, for some reason, it reminds me of my father as a much younger man, of the time huh, of spent. Like, there's something about Glenn Campbell's catalog that really takes me back to being a very little girl around my dad when he was a very young man, so... Um, here it is, Wichita Lineman. Joanne Doherty on WDCB and Piano Forte Studios.
Thank you so much. Um, we always get so many people come up to us and say, oh my gosh, that song. And, and I, I'm in that camp myself. Oh my gosh, that song. It, the, I was just reading about uh, J Jimmy Webb and, and Glenn Campbell about this, and, and uh, Jimmy Webb sent a little bit of it to Glenn Campbell, and, he, and, and, he, and they were talking about it, and, and he said, well, it's not finished yet, and Glenn Campbell's like, well, I just recorded it, so it's definitely finished. Um, so it's a short little song, but it has so much, and it's such, such a place, and um, you know, it's about a working man. I think that's what the thing that kind of connects me to my father on this. I, I'm a lineman for the county. I mean, it's like, like those people don't get songs written about them all that much. So that's a, uh, I don't know, that one, that one means a lot to me. So thank you for sharing, sharing that with us. Uh, here's another original tune of mine. Uh, this one's called Harold's Tune. Um, so we'll, we'll take you down south to the place we all like to visit, New Orleans. Uh, it's, it's got a lot of that in there. Um, and we used to play this at a restaurant called Houston's back when that was here. And, um, and there was a, a, a guy that worked there named Harold who just loved it. So I gave the song to him. So this is, I haven't seen him in 20 years, but um, still his song, Harold's Tune.
The Joanne Doherty Trio here at Piano Forte Studios in Chicago with Joanne Doherty at the piano, Joshua Ramos on the bass, and Ryan Bennett on the drums. One more time for the Joanne Doherty Trio. WDCB's Jazz Fest Week broadcasts are made possible in part by Char Print Screen Printing and Embroidery, Vom Foss in Naperville and Lincoln Square, Record Wonderland in Roselle, and North Coast Brewing Company. This broadcast is also made possible through the cooperation of Piano Forte Chicago, dedicated to helping people to love the piano. More info available at pianofortechicago.com. Tonight's event is part of a week-long series of live broadcasts here on WDCB. We invite you to join us tomorrow night at 6.30 p.m. for the first of three live broadcasts from the main stage of the 40th Annual Chicago Jazz Festival in Millennium Park as we present Orbert Davis's Chicago Jazz Philharmonic on WDCB. You can find out more about all of our Jazz Fest Week radio broadcasts and the festival itself at WDCB.org. Thanks to Thomas Zoles, Victor Lejeune, and the entire crew at Piano Forte for their help with tonight's production. Thanks also to Ken Scott, Bill Tennant, Clarice Cavoris, and Dan Bindert for production assistance. A special thanks to our friends at CAN-TV 27 for bringing this hour to television screens all across the city of Chicago. And thanks again, of course, to Joanne Doherty and her trio for sharing their music with us. I'm Leslie Karras saying thank you for listening and watching. Stay tuned for a special presentation of a live set from the Roosevelt University Jazz Ensemble recorded at last year's Chicago Jazz Festival. That's coming up next at 7 p.m. right here on Chicago's Home for Jazz, WDCB. Just wondering, Joanne, can you play us out? Sure. All right.